Good day chaps. So today's video is going to be a little bit different from the usual design and development story. And this is going to look at the firing trials of the tortoise tank against the captured panther. This story also arcs into a wider issue at the time, which was focused around the next tank gun for the UK, with the choice still being between the 32 pounder and the 20 pounder guns. So where to begin in this video? Well, we won't be covering the tortoise development, as we've covered that already, and although there is still far more to cover, it's worth going over one point, and that was the role tortoise was to have in the army, given its long development time and the war being effectively over by the time any had been built. Tortoise was designed as a heavy assault tank, and had by the war's end been trimmed down from 25 vehicles to 12, and then 6 vehicles. But the director of the Royal Armoured Corps felt they should still proceed with these six, not out of a desire to have a viable fighting platform, but rather, as we covered before, as a testing platform for new ideas and theories in how such heavy vehicles would operate. With the fall of Germany and Russian belligerents, it was clear to the British early on who the new enemy was, and that he had been very busy making new tanks and vehicles. This, coupled with the fact that the British were also envisioning their own heavy counters to the future, left them in a pickle. How to gain the necessary operational experience and data gathering for vehicles in the possible 70 to 80 ton range, when there were no vehicles in service approaching that weight class? Of the original tortoises, P1 was ready, and the Director of Royal Armoured Corps was keen that a minimum of three were needed to ensure that troop trials could be carried out, as while just one vehicle was suitable for gathering individual data, it was inadequate to get the information on how such vehicles would behave as a troop, including logistics, bridge crossing and transport issues. As six such vehicles were near completion, he asked that all six would be made ready to enter service, although only five would ever get this far. P4 and P5 were sent out to the British Army on the Rhine for testing these exact theories and ideas, from driving through towns to testing the autobahn and bridges out, and were part of a new experimental formation known as WE8. Meanwhile, back in the UK, they wanted to test out the guns and see exactly how well the 32 pounder had fared. Only 50 of these guns had been made and were currently in storage at the time, along with limited amounts of ammunition. Some had been made for the planned tortoises, and others for SP-4, a case-mated tank destroyer version of Centurion, which will be covered in another video. Some early tests had already taken place, with a 32-pounder armour-piercing discarding sabre rounds made for it. These tests had been carried out in December 1946 against the 200mm plate angled back at 40, 45 and 50 degrees for 261 282 and 311 millimetres effectively. The first 32 pounder round at 4,204 foot per second perforated the plate angle back at 40 degrees with a clean plug out. On the 45 degree angle plate, three shots were fired at. The first shot at 4,497 foot per second did not perforate, shattering and leaving a scoop four inches deep. The second shot at 4,519 foot per second perforated with a clean spiral plugging out the steel. And the third shot at 4,809 foot per second did the same, perforating the steel target with a clean plug. For the 311 mm plate, the results were less effective. The first shot at 4,807 foot per second left a hole 5.5 inches deep, leaving a smooth bulge but no perforation. The second shot at 4,875 had the same result. The third at 4,897 foot per second perforated fine with a clean plug out. And the fourth at 5,885 foot per second shattered with a large bulge. So only about 25% effective at this time. However, this is still more than enough to clap an IS-3 back to the Shadowlands if needed. The conclusion at the time of this testing was that the 32 pounder APDS was superior to the 20 pounder APDS. Further tests were then carried out on Tortoise P1 at Lulworth over the next few years. The original plan had been to test the vehicle at Lark Hill, however it was not deemed safe enough and so it was moved to the Lulworth Rangers. 
This also coincided with the anti-tank aspect from the Royal Artillery being stripped to them and moved over to the Royal Armoured Corps, which was based at Bovington. Unfortunately, on her first test, the gun was not installed correctly, and this caused nearly all of her rounds not to eject correctly. She then went into a full-blown tank sulk and broke her clutch after just 10.1 miles. A strongly worded letter was sent to the FVPE about supplying a duff tank, to which they responded that while the gun was indeed their mistake, they could not be held accountable for P1 breaking down, as she was known to be notoriously unreliable, and that on delivery they had told those present not to drive it over 10 miles. With the tortoise effectively unable to move, they decided to progress with static firing trials against the Panther. This test was done on the 20th of June, 1949. The tortoise was allocated 100 rounds of armour-piercing capped ballistic capped rounds, while the centurion had 20 rounds of 20-pounder APDS, and each was given a small amount of high explosive. The panther was located at 1300 yards from the centurion, angled at about 50 degrees offset, with the aim of the objective being to strike the mark on the panther's upper plate, and while quite a few of the shots hit from centurion, they were discounted as the ability to perforate the thinly armoured areas was a given. The aim of the game, as it were, was to hit the heaviest armour accurately and perforate it. The Centurion fired seven shots, all of which hit the target, but not where they were aimed for. These included two lower nose shots, which was recorded as a fatality to the driver, but voided as not on target. Two further shots hit the Panther's rear turret, the first would have been fatal to the commander. The second, just below the escape hatch, caused severe cracking and a large chunk to blow off, but no internal damage was recorded. Only two shots struck the glassy plate and were still off-center. The first hit the bow gunner's port. This perforated and broke the rear bulkhead. The driver and gunner would have been killed, but the round again dismissed as not on target. The second hit just above the weld seam, with lethal effects to the gunner, and serious injuries to the gunner and loader's positions, but dismissed again as not on target. The final hit was the only one on target, with a strike to the low end of the glassy plate. The driver and gunner would have been wounded, with the gearbox and final drive somewhat damaged. Next up it was Tortoise's turn. She was positioned 1,850 yards away, and in a Hollywood-esque moment, having watched the Centurion struggle to hit its target reliably, fired a single shot. This struck the glassy centre proper, ripping through the plate, the gearbox and the engine in a single hit. The panther's armour was split in two places, the weld seam below came away and a large disc scabbed from the inside. The shot would have been fatal to all crew. One could only imagine the tortoise then casually putting on a pair of shades and shoulder bumping the centurion as it passed by. It was noted afterwards that the panther like many of those captured, was found to have very poor quality steel in its armour, evident from the cracking and heavy spooling. However, the 32-pounder in the Tortoise had proven far more accurate and devastating than the Centurion's 20-pounder gun. Another test was scheduled as part of Project 193, to be held on the 16th of May 1950 with Tortoise P3. This vehicle was used in place of P1, which was always temperamental at best, and used to conclude the test around firing and traversing, as well as the rate of fire without the rounds getting stuck in the breech. In this test, P3 was to carry 12 armour-piercing capped ballistic cap rounds and some 50 high-explosive rounds. The goals were to study the accuracy of the high-explosive rounds at ranges of 3,000 to 4,000 yards and any merits of limited traverse guns, while AP rounds were used to test the maximum firing rate after initial four rounds were allocated for zeroing in on the shots. The Centurion 3 was also used as a comparison vehicle in these tests, and both were firing from fixed hard positions with concrete bases. For the AP rounds, the Tortoise was able to land eight shots in 63.8 seconds, giving a reload time of 7.9 seconds, putting 90% of the shots in a 15 by 15 inch grouping at 1,000 yards. For the high explosive tests, the mean average at 3,000 yards was 9 yards square and at 4,000 yards, the mean average was 12.5 yards. However, it was found that the accuracy dropped off near the end of each shoot due to the poor ventilation inside the tortoise. 
At 2,000 yards, the Centurion was marginally more accurate with high explosive, by half a yard. However, beyond this, the range increased to 4,000 yards, and the Tortoise was twice as accurate with high explosive shots. Both vehicles were then tested on switching targets, and it was found that although the Tortoise had an understandably slower traverse rate than the Centurion, taking 28 seconds to traverse 60 degrees, Centurion 3 managed the same in 18 seconds. The weapon was still extremely accurate, and that one loader was actually quite capable of keeping the fire rate up for the first five rounds, after which point he began to tire. Other features which were marked upon was the driver's indicator, which showed him which way the commander was looking so that he could begin to swivel the tortoise's hull to bring the gun to bear, and that compared to the 20-pounder, the 32-pounder had very little obscuration with a clean trace of the gunner to observe. The only negative aspect was the lack of a catch net for spent rounds, which meant a lot of hot cases on the floor of the tortoise, which indeed caused the loader some balance problems, as well as burning his boots and trouser bottoms. Several smaller but non-essential issues were also raised. From this testing it was suggested that a limited number of centurions might be better off with a 32 pounder gun for testing, and to make crews familiar with two-part ammunition loading, as well as gain experience in this gun for future roles, and at least one centurion was modified to fit a 32 pounder gun as a result. However, the director of the Royal Armoured Corps later wrote in a handwritten letter that he felt the need for a casemated vehicles was not required, as the exposure to being attacked in the flank was just too much of a high risk, nor did he no longer feel the need for a 32 pounder, as the requirement following a tripartite meeting was now for a 120mm weapon. However, in the meantime, could they quietly look at mounting either a 4.5-inch AA or a 155mm gun into Centurion to fire Hesh? He wrote to the Minister of Supply, saying there would be no further use of Tortoise, and that all machining and jigs be scrapped, and that the example they had, P1, would be delivered to the AFV Museum, Bovington, between 6 o'clock and 8 o'clock on Thursday the 13th of March 1952. Well guys, I hope you liked that brief video about the firing trials of Tortoise. Despite her lumbering appearance and very temperamental nature, she was at least a good test platform. I feel that Drax's sentiment not being needed were at least correct. So, until next time, toodle pip.